Hi and welcome back. Henry of HRU Bricks with the Lego Boost Control GBC Pneumatic Ball Factory. Let's take a closer look. The Lego Boost Hub controls the overall cycle of the GBC and that includes the color sensing module which has the external motor and the color sensing sensor in it. It controls the pneumatic control box in the back corner which drives the main movements of the robotic picking arm. It also turns the power function switch as well. It acts as a relay switch, which in turn drives the rotation, drives the servo motor, which drives the rotation of the robotic arm. The ball supply is activated manually via the power function switch at the front of the GBC. Would have liked it to have been controlled by the on off of that to be controlled by the hub. However, the hub just doesn't have enough channels. It's got one external motor, two internal, and the color sensing module. So we just didn't have any more channels left. As the balls move through the ball supply module into the color sensing module, they are scanned by the boost color and distance sensor. The color sensing module itself has a cam inside which positions the various uh, pistons and it positions them via turning from zero to 90 to 180 degrees and going through a cycle. What happens is as the ball comes in, it, is, it, it waits its position, it goes into the color sensing area, sensors, and then the color sensing, if it's a ball that is to be picked, it will actually move it into the next section and it will raise up for the picking robot to collect. If it's not, it goes down and continues back into the vertical conveyor and back into the hopper. The pneumatically controlled picking robot code is actually activated when the color sensing ball reads either the red ball or the blue ball. Uh, the boost hub then drives the pneumatic control box and it too has sensors so it actually will turn a certain number of degrees and that'll actually activate certain valves at particular timings to cycle the picking arm to go down, pick up, come back. Then it will activate the power function switch to rotate the servo, to activate the servo and rotate the arm and be able to move into position to drop the balls either in the red red box or the blue box depending on the actual color. So that switch goes through a 0, 20 and 40 degree cycle and each one of those corresponds to the different positions that the robot arm actually sits. When the picking robot is actually overburdened and it, which can happen because it's at a certain cycle time there is a ball return shoot and it's quite effective of getting the balls back into the vertical conveyor and back into the hopper so it can keep cycling as the ball picking robot is moving these balls out. And what can happen is once it's done its cycle and the ball picking robot senses no more, or the color sensing module senses no more, it'll actually speed up and it will clear that backlog of balls and move through them quite quickly. So then it can get to a normal functioning cycle of one or two every five or six balls. The pneumatic air pressure is supplied via an external source and I did build a V4 automatic compressor and this is it. However, it just doesn't have the capacity to keep up with the air flow. It, it's got the pressure, it goes up to three bar, which is great. However, it just doesn't have the flow to it. So I actually have to double that before we can use it on this. Alternatively, now I actually run it off a cylinder and I run it at between 1.7 and 1.9 bar. And that is enough pressure to actually supply and it has enough flow to supply the robot at the highest of demands. I'm planning on doing a video of that compressor and there'll also be some instructions on actually how to build that. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button, hit the bell, click the like, and I'm gonna make the next video in this which is going to be on the code. It's not super complex, but it's not super easy. There's a lot of sequencing in it and I'll go through step by step of how to build that. Along with that, I'll actually put a link in the description to my rebrickable page and there you'll be able to find the stud.io files for this and that'll give you the, the, the parts to use as well as show you some instructions in that program, stud.io. Also on that rebrickable page is all my other builds so you'll be able to download those and build them to your heart's contempt. Big thanks to Quanix for his inspiration. He's got some amazing ball factories that he's built and some other builds on there. He's just put out his V3. The link's in the description, check it out. And thanks to the Lego Boost page on Facebook uh, for some support, on, early support on this. Um, they were fantastic, posted some questions. They pointed me in the right direction and I was able to run with it and actually get the code right. 
Thanks for watching. Time to get building. I'm Henry of HRU Bricks. What will you create?